the precious blood of Christ. Oh, yeah. No guilt in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. From a life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my death. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, amen. I enjoyed that, staying in the love of Christ alone, amen. Amen, amen. All right, open your Bibles, if you would, today to Revelation chapter number 3. Revelation chapter number 3. Be sure to be here tonight, and we're going to have a good time in the Lord's house tonight. I want you to be sure to be here, and uh, we'll enjoy a time of fellowship, and a time of the good Lord willing some preaching, and just have a good time. It's been a good, good service so far, hadn't it? I hope, hope I don't blow up, mess it up. Amen. Amen. All right, Revelation chapter number three. If you've got your place there, say amen. amen. If, if, if Revelation chapter three and is chapter two is where the Lord starts giving to John the beloved about the seven churches there in Asia. And Brother Jerry's writing to him, and he writes to the pastor of the church, or the angel of the church, and you know that. And, and he's trying to instruct them and tell them about some things that are needed in each church. And then you get to the chapter, the latter part of chapter 3 is the Laodicean church, is the church age in which we are in the last, I believe the last of the Laodicean church age. I don't believe, Brother Larry, we're at the first of it. I believe we're at the last of it. And uh, I, that's where I believe we're at, and that's where I believe biblically we're at. And then in chapter number 4, if you know anything about the Bible, if you know anything about the latter times or uh, last days of the Bible, you'll know that the, the chapter 4 is when uh, the rapture of the church takes place. And Lord, I, and I'm waiting on that day, aren't you? Amen. Brother, I'm excited about that moment. I'm excited about the day the Lord comes back for the bride of Christ. I'm excited about that. I'm looking forward to it. I, I'm look, I look for him to come before daylight. And if you did, hey, I look for him to come during the Sunday school hour. And I'm looking for him to come before I get through preaching. And I'm looking for him to come after the service and then tonight. If you don't come today, brother, or other, Doug, I'm looking for him to come tomorrow. Why? We are that close. We're on the cuff of the Lord Jesus Christ coming back. And when he comes, I want to be, I want to be found faithful doing what God anticipates us to do. I don't want to be on the sideline. I don't want, I don't want to be on the sideline. I don't, want to be a, I don't want to be on the bench waiting on him to come back. I want to be active doing exactly what God's called us to do in our lives and in your life as well. I hope you feel the same way. So in Revelation chapter number 3, he talks about there uh, the, the church of Philadelphia. And if you know anything about the church of Philadelphia, one of the characteristics of that church is that they had love in it. And God help us today if we don't have love. Amen. If we don't have love here, God help us. If you don't have love in your heart for one another, if you don't have love in your heart for that poor lost sinner going to hell, if you don't have love in your heart, Amen. Because why? Because love covereth the multitude of sin. That's what the Bible says. And if you don't have love, if you can't forgive and you don't have love in your heart, Brother Benji, we in bad shape. 
So he, the church of Philadelphia is a church of love. And he says unto the angel or the pastor of the church of Philadelphia, write these things. Saith he that is holy and he that is true and he that had the key of David and he that openeth that no man shutteth and shutteth that no man open. So in other words, God opens doors that nobody can open. And God shuts doors that nobody can shut. And he says, I know thy works, and behold, I have set before thee an open door. Now, I believe God in our lives opens doors as a church, and I believe God in our lives as a church shuts doors. But he is telling the church here in Philadelphia, he said, I'm not closing the door, Brother David. I'm opening the door. And Brother Larry, on a closed door, nothing can get through. Brother Wayne, if the door's closed, that means you don't want nobody in. And if the door's closed, you don't want nobody out. And Brother David, if the door's closed, you're not, you don't even know what's going on on the outside. Amen. And so, but if he opens the door, opportunity arises. If he opens the door, our opportunities are endless. You can go in, you can go out, you can stay out, you can stay in. You can bring somebody in. You can take somebody out. You can, hey, what I'm saying is when God opens the door, hey, when God opens the door, it's a door of opportunity, and there's no telling what, man, what may happen. He said, I've set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. Amen. I believe 60-plus years ago when they started this church, God opened the door. In this community, God opened the door. And he opened the door, Brother Mark, and the Bible says when God opens the door, nobody, no man can shut it. For thou hast little strength and was kept my word, and he said, has not denied my name. Behold, I will make them the synagogue of Satan, which saith there are Jews and are not, but, thou, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. Now, I don't want to get in, I don't, I, I don't have time today to talk about the synagogue of Satan and all those things, but, it, it, but they, this religious crowd in our day, and it's a religious crowd that says that they're doing something good, but in reality, Brother Frankie, they're of the devil. Hey, can I say, you say, preacher, I don't understand that. Well, if a, if a church is preaching something that's not biblical, they're, what they're doing is they're giving people false sense of security that they're going to heaven, Brother, brother uh, Kevin, and they're damning their souls. And Jesus said it this way. He told the Pharisees, he said, I, I'm trying to get somewhere this morning. He told the Pharisees, he said, you'll go, you'll go way out of your, your way. You'll get way out of here. And you go way over there to make a proselyte. And he said, but you've made him a twofold child of hell. It's a bad thing, Brother David, when somebody thinks they're going to heaven, but in reality they're going to hell. And simply because some church has given them a sense, a, a sense of security, a false sense of security. Security. And he said, There's, here's what the situation is. He said, I, you, you, you know them. You know them. You know who they are. And because I have kept the, 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 word, the word of my patience, I will also keep them from that hour of temptation, he said, which shall come upon all the world to try them to, be with their own, uh, to dwell on earth. Behold, I come quickly. He said, this is what he said, hold fast that which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. The Bible says this, Jesus said, whom much is given, much is required. And if you've been here the last 25 years, or if you've been here any length of time, you've got the Bible preached to you. Not because I'm a good preacher, but I try to preach the Bible, Brother Jerry. And he says this, he says this, he said, oh, he said I'm going to give it to you. And behold, I come quickly. He said, hold fast what you've got. Because what you have, hey, hey, how many people here has gone through this church in 25 years have grown up here and believed different than now than they did when they left here? Not that we're the end all, the end all, brother. I'm not saying that. But we have the only Bible. And there's only one truth. Amen. And you've got family members and i got family members that come through here that, that believe something different today than, than when they believed here, when they was here. 
Amen. I'm not, I, I'm not here to try to jump on anybody. Brother Jerry, I'm not. But that's what he said. He said, you better hang on to that. You better hang on to what you know is right. He said that no man taketh the crown. He said, him that overcome, I will give him a pillar in the temple of my God. There shall be, uh, they shall go no more out, and I will write a, uh, upon them. He said, the name of God, which the name of the city of God, which is the new Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon them my new name. This is what's amazing right here. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Seven churches here. And, and God tells John, he says, I want you to write it. And the Lord Jesus Christ is speaking. And he said, he that hath an ear. Well, all of us have an ear. Some of us can't hear as good physically as others. That's why you got hearing aids. Amen. There's nothing wrong with it. I, I, one day, brother, I may have to wear one. I'm going to let my hair grow down so you can't see. But hey, he, this is what I'm talking about a spiritual ear, brother Doug. He that hath an ear spiritually, let him hear what the Spirit of God says to us. And my prayer today is that we can open up our hearts and our ears to what the Spirit of God says to us today. But he says this, Brother Michael, back in, back in verse, uh, verse number, what it wasn't verse number, uh, verse number eight, he said, I've set before thee an open door. So can I say this this morning? I'm trying to get to where the message so I can get, get, uh, give you what God's put on my heart. The greatest thing in this world that God has given us is the church. The greatest thing, it's not the ability that we have. It's not that we can teach or play or sing. That, that's not the greatest thing, Brother Frank, God has given us in, in this world. I'm talking about saved folk now. I'm talking about you and I that are born again. Hey, that's not the greatest thing. The greatest thing is not our ability, and the greatest thing is not our excuse of inability. But the greatest thing that God's given His children is the church. Hey, can I, can, let me tell you what the church is. The church quickly is. The church, the, the true and right church has the proper gospel. The true and right church has the Bible as a guide for the, the right gospel, the King James Bible. So I could say if you don't have the King James Bible, you're not the proper church. So you've got to have the proper gospel. You've got to have proper leadership. To have the right kind of church, the proper church, you gotta have the right kind of leadership. You gotta have the right pastor in the right place. How many preachers today that are in the wrong pulpits? Amen. Hey, how many preachers today that, that should be a different place that should that, 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 than where they are now? Because they've moved because of popularity, or they move from one place to the other for, for a bigger paycheck or a bigger congregation or a different location. Hey, that's not the proper church. So the proper church gotta have the right gospel, it's gotta have the right leadership, it's gotta have the right doctrine. I said that Wednesday night. I preached about the doctrine. Wednesday night, you've got to have right doctrine to believe anything. Because there's so many people who's got the wrong doctrine. And then you've got to have people in the church that live right. And there's nothing wrong. Hey, there's nothing wrong, Brother Kevin, with living right. I'm not saying, and I'm not saying that you're living wrong, but to have the right kind of church, Brother Ronald, we've got to have people that live right. Amen. So the greatest thing, hey, then you got to have discipleship. You got to go out and get somebody. We just can't close our curtains and we can't shut the door. He said, I've set before you, Brother Ridge, an open door. Not a closed door, but an open door. So you got to have discipleship. You got to go out and get somebody. That's why we're having friend day next week. So we can go out and get somebody. And that's the right kind of church. Hey, listen, when I, I, I've heard, I heard somebody say years ago, said, I'll tell you, the church ought to just be a community church and just anybody that's in the community can come. But if they're outside the community, they, not supposed to, they, they shouldn't come to a local church. Oh, me, oh, me. That'd cut a lot of us out, wouldn't it? Amen. But aren't you glad it ain't that way? Amen. Aren't you glad it ain't that way? Some of you drive a long ways. 
Hey, listen, that, that's a, and when Jesus returns, Brother David, he'll return for the glorious church. He'll return for those that are saved. He doesn't, he doesn't care about these chandeliers and he doesn't care about the, these padded pews. Hey, he's going to come back for the glorious church, the blood washed, the saved, the born again children of God. So I told you what the church is, but let me tell you what the church ain't. The church is not man-made. You came, a man cannot make the church. God places and puts in a church. A, I'm talking about a local assembly. He plants us and puts us in a church, and it's not a man-made. It's not a it's not a Bible study group. It's not house to house. That's not a church. Amen. It's not an ecumenical group either. It's not a national church. That knocks out the Catholics, don't it? It's not a state church. This local church don't belong to the state. We're not a national church. We don't belong to any national group. That's why I like being independent so nobody don't have to tell us what we can do and can't do. Amen. Amen. I'd hate, hey, can I say this real quick now? This may hair lip a couple of you, but I'd hate to know I was in the Methodist church and if I wanted to get out, I had to buy my own church house. That's what they have to do. I'd hate to know that, wouldn't you? I'd hate to go to a church like that. I had to, I'd have to give my tithes and offering to a church and then have to turn around and buy it if I wanted, it, if I wanted a church that I've already paid for. Boy, that makes good sense, don't it? So that's what it's not. It's not a national church. Hey, it's not even the kingdom of God. And so the lost world cannot understand the church house. When you go home today or when you come to church this morning, but you pass a lot of people that will not go to church, have not been to church, and hasn't been to church in years, and don't even know what the church is about. They don't understand the church. And a lot of times, Brother Mark, I don't understand the church. But here we are anyway, the church house. Hey, I'm talking about the church house. And the lost can understand it, but the lost needs us. They ought to thank God that God placed in this community our church and every other local church in the community, local Bible church in the community. Hey, God exalted the local church. Amen. He exalted the local church. I know there ain't a whole lot of shouting, but I'm telling you, this is what God put on my heart at 4 o'clock this morning. This ain't what I had planned on. Amen. I, I, hey, Brother David, I'd have rather preach what I had planned because I'd have slept longer. But God woke me up, Brother Warren, and told me this is what I'm preaching on. And I want to preach about my church. And if, you, if you're a member here, this is your church. And God's exalted the local church. And, and he told John, hey, Jesus told John, he said, I have set before the local church an open door. I have set before your church house, I have set before our church house an open door. And we can, either, we can either use that open door or God can shut that open door and open it for somebody else. Amen. Now, I want to be instructional this morning. I don't want to be ugly, and I don't want to be mean. Hey, but God's exalted the church. But sadly to say, many have lost the, the, the effect is their, their affection for the church house. Amen. My church, your church. Listen, we ought to be interested in its well-being. Give you, four, give you four things right quick and we'll go, go home and eat. Number one, what about my church? I'll tell you what, if it was my church, I'd support it. Brother, if it was my church, I'd support it, Brother Danny. Hey, if you consider this to be your church, you ought to get in here and help support it and lift it up. Bible says in Hebrews, now you, you, I, I know that some of you, 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 it ain't gonna bother you what I say today. It ain't gonna bother you at all. And, and, and it, ha it happened for 25 years, so why start today? But, uh, it, but, but you ought to support the church house. This is what the Bible says. The Bible says, not forsaking the assembly of yourselves together. So we assemble three times a week Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. And you ought to support it. 
Amen, Brother Benji, I appreciate that. We are supported. Hey, listen, don't, you, don't, you, don't, you are supported. You don't have to get on the phone and tell everything that you know about it bad. You know, brother, I'm telling you, how, how many people today will get on, the, get on the telephone and call other people and tell them something bad that's going on at the church house? They don't get on it, brother, da, brother David, uh, uh, brother Doug, and tell them everything good's going on. Brother Danny, I don't understand. Why is it we like to tell the bad stuff but not the good stuff? When's the last time you got on there and said, boy, we really had a service? So-and-so got right with God. The altar's filled up three times. Preacher really preached or, or the singer's really good or all those things. But no, 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 brother, brother Mark. What we do, we get on there and tell the bad stuff. Amen. Amen. But he said, I've sat before you an open door. And that door that he's opened, it is, it's not for you to get on the telephone and tell everybody what you know. Amen. Brother, I know a lot of stuff about a lot of people. 25 years, people's come to me, Brother Martin, told me stuff about, about themselves, and they said, please don't tell them. I know a lot of stuff on a lot of people. Now, what kind of pastor would I be, Brother David, if I got on the phone and told everything I know about Brother David or Brother Ronald? Everything bad I know. Hey, I wouldn't be much of a pastor, would I? And Brother Larry, if all we do is get on the phone and tell something bad about the church, boy, what kind of member are we? Yeah, man. Hey, we are supported. We are not trying to tear it down. We are trying to build it up. Yeah, man. Hey, we are supported with our presence, number one. We are, you are supported by being here. Amen. I get work, I get sickness, I get vacation, I get that stuff. But there's a lot of people that stay home that, that, that they don't have no business staying home. They, they don't have no business, they, they don't have no problem going anywhere else after 12 o'clock on Sunday. You'll see them down there at the Christie's kitchen down there eating when you go. Boy, I was sick, I couldn't go this morning. They don't have no problem. They got their appetite back, Brother Larry, at 12 o'clock. Amen. So we are supported with our presence. I get sickness. I know some of your sickness and some of your chronic sickness. I get. I understand that, and I, I have empathy for you, and I understand that. But I'm telling you, if we got if we got enough strength to get up and go everywhere else after church, brother, there we ought to have enough strength to get the house of God. Amen. Brother Doug, I, I, I got up, like I said, got up early this morning and I took my medicine and I had I take two pills. Brother, brother, uh, uh, brother Kevin, I thought about you and all that food y'all had. I said, man, he better be doubling up on that stuff. Man. All pure and all. He better, get, he better load up, son. And I, that's what I, I take that and I take another pill and, and, uh, and I took that and I took it on an empty stomach and I said, mm. And about, about uh, 7 o'clock or so or 7.30, I told Miss Tammy, I said, we got any cheese crackers around here? I mean, I'm, I'm sick about to throw up, and I don't want to throw my medicine up and have to take it again. It ain't free. But I took it, and I started feeling, I ate some, she made me a, two or three or four uh, cheese crackers, and I ate three or four of them, and I started feeling better. And I feel pretty good. Hey, Amen. Some of y'all don't look like y'all feel good. You are supported with your presence. Hey, you are supported with your purse. You are to give, not a tip, a tithe. You are to give. Amen. Why is it right for me to give and you not to? Why is it right for somebody else to give and you not to? Amen. If you're a singer, you are to give. If you're a teacher, you are to give. If you're a deacon, you are to give. If you sing in the choir, you are to give. Amen. Praise the Lord. Why? Because that helps support the church. That helps support the church. Hey, listen, we are, to, we are to do it with our presence. We are to do it with our prayers. Brother, Brother Mark, we are to do it with our prayers. We are to pray daily for the house of God. We are to pray for each other. Pray for each other. Pray for your pastor. Pray for your Sunday school teacher. Pray for your deacon. Pray for that one on the other side of the pew from you. Pray for one another. Why? That's how you support us. Amen. Amen. Some of you used to come on Wednesday night. You don't do that no more. Why? You get off from working time. 
Well, I'm tired, preacher. There's some here, some here that's been re- that, that that worked and retired, and they still come. They come on Wednesday night when they were your age. Why? Because they want to support the church. Amen. You used to come on Wednesday nights. You used to come on revival. You wouldn't miss revival. You wouldn't miss Sunday school. Thank God for the great number we had in Sunday school. I was shocked. I went, Brother David, I went back to the, to the office and said, I want you girls, y'all girls, I want y'all to count every Sunday. I want y'all, y'all count good. I like the way y'all count. Amen. But we used, you used to come on Wednesday night, but you, you can still come, but you don't. Well, preacher, yeah, don't hand me that. Don't hand me that. You go anywhere else you want to go, you'll go to Walmart 14 times this week. Amen. Hey, help, help. Listen, listen, parents, can I say this real, real nice? As I know how to, if you don't support the church, your children won't. Amen. The best we can do, brother, the best we can do, they can still turn out not. That's the best we can do. But that doesn't give us license not to do our best. The world, hey, the world should drive by the church house on Sunday morning and Sunday night and Wednesday night and see the parking lot full. Why? So they'll say, man, there's something going on there. You ought to be able to have to hunt a parking spot. Not yours parking spot, but a parking spot. And I can say, Brother Warren, I can say that because I know where I'm going to park every Sunday. <laughs> yeah, man. But we ought to, hey, the world ought to drive by here and see, man, they, that place is full. That place is full. They shouldn't drive by there and say, man, they, something must be going on over there. There ain't nobody there. Mm. Faithful. Hey, faithful to your church that you support. Faithful. And he said, I've set before you an open door. And you, if you'll be faithful to church, you can watch God bless us beyond imagination. Just support it. Number two, you got to sacrifice for it. Today we begin to, uh, we are to give more to the church than just lip service. And I tell you, it'll take sacrifice on a Wednesday night after you've worked all week. It'll take sacrifice. You have to die to your flesh. I know. Hey, listen, I get it. I get where you're at. I understand that. I, I don't, hey, but I'm telling you, you have to sacrifice and die to your flesh. And some of you come in here a few minutes late because you get off work and you run home and you change clothes and you come to, I don't have a problem with that. I don't. If you come in here late, my preacher told me this. Now, this ain't giving you no lie. I shouldn't even say this out loud. I might be messing up right here. But my pastor told me, he said, I'd rather you be late and not show up at all. So I'd rather you be a few minutes late, five minutes late, ten minutes late, for you not show up at all. Amen. And it'll take some sacrifice on our part and your part. Hey, because why? Why do I do that? Brother, why do I sacrifice? Why did I get up early this morning? Why do I pray? Why do I study? Why do I do? do? Because it's my church. My, Brother Dave, this is my church. This ain't the church. This ain't somebody else's church. This is my church. I, I, I take a personal interest in it. Yeah, man, this is my church. And I want, you to take, I want you to understand, it's time that we stand up and tell the devil and the world, this is your church. This is your church. And you don't want nobody talking about your preacher at your church. Brother, I was about 19, Brother Michael, and we was going by my home church, and I was driving with it. This guy was the boss and the owner of the company. I was working at HVAC, and, and I was just a little old flunky, and I'm the one that carried the tools around, you know. He'd say, go get this. He called me Bojangles. That's what he called me. Hey, Bojangles, go get me a screwdriver. I'd go get a screwdriver. Hey, Bojangles, go get that. I'd go get that. Why? Because that's all I was. I was just Bojangles. Didn't know nothing. Didn't know nobody. Didn't know nothing. But I tell you one thing, I knew I was saved. And I knew I went to my home church and I knew my pastor and I loved him and prayed for him. And he started talking about my church and I told him, I said, pull over. He said, why? I said, I'm getting out. You're not talking about my church because that's my church. Amen. So tell the devil in the world, hey, you're going to have to sacrifice. You might have to lose a friend or two. 
Amen. He didn't pull over. He said, I'm sorry, and we went on. But he didn't talk about the church no more. God planted you here. God placed you here. God put you here. He put us here to shine, not to rust. To shine. Amen. So let's give of ourselves. Brother Dan, let's give of ourselves. Give ourselves over to God fresh and anew. Wouldn't that be good? Wouldn't that be good? Give over to yourself. Hey, give yourself to the service of this church. Whatever the church needs for you to do, let's just do it. That's the way I, my, my pastor said do it. I just did it. You said, well, I don't understand it. I didn't either, but I just did it. Why? Because the preacher said so. Amen. Amen. We're to give over ourselves to the service of the church. Now, I know we ain't what we used to be. I'm telling you, Brother Frankie, I ain't what I was 25 years ago. I ain't. None of us are. None of us are. But I still, I got that same hunger and desire to give over to the church to sacrifice whatever God tells me to do. I do. I mean, I'm serious about that thing. You say, preacher, you get paid. If that's, all, if that's as deep as you go, man, you ain't going to go far. I believe you ought to give yourself over to the church afresh and anew. Amen. I think things ought to be done in decency and order, don't you? Amen. It's not going to be romp, romper room. We're not going to come over here where the lights are flashing in, the, in darkness and, and, and the ball dropping from the middle. We ain't going to do all that. I think our things ought to be decent and order. I think you ought to dress decent and order, don't you? Amen. Amen. Brother Tater, they asked me why you got Tater. I, don't, I said, and we'll, I'll find out after church why they call you Tater. I don't know. I said, I don't know. Maybe he likes Tater. I don't know. But, but I'll tell you, he, he, what he has on don't bother me. Now, if he, what he had on had holes cut all in the holes in it, you know, I could, see his, I could see his knees and his knobby knees. That would bother me. Wouldn't it you? Yeah, man. But I think he ought to do things decently in order. Amen. I know a lady one time, she, she worked and she was going to try to get to church on Wednesday night. She'd take a skirt to, church, to work. And when she got to work, when she'd go in the bathroom, and, am I telling it right? She'd go in the bathroom and change into a skirt because she knew she wanted to be here on Wednesday night. Why? Because she just wanted to do things. De- I figured that quiet a lot of y'all. I figured because she wanted to do things decent and in order. Amen. Amen. Just because you, you had to sacrifice. You have to sacrifice a little bit. I have to tell my flesh, brother, I don't come over here, I, I, I don't come over here on Sunday morning dressed like I do on Saturday night. <laughs> Help us, Jesus. It'll take, it'll take you giving. It'll take your giving. It'll take my giving. It'll take all of us giving to see this place grow and glow for the glory of God. Can I give you two more things? Y'all all right? Y'all still all right? Just a couple more things. Just a couple more things. Number, number three, not only do we ought to support it and sacrifice for it, you ought to have a standard of it. That, that word standard means it's something that's stable. Standard means there's something that's visible. And it's time that we elevate our church to a level that's above everything on our schedule. Church, church should be above everything on our schedule. Why? Why? Because it's got a standard. Church house. Listen, some of you, can I ask a question just, just between you and God and nobody else? Can I ask a question? We got friend day coming up. Have you anybody even thought of somebody to bring? More or less called them, text them. I had a fellow do a little work for me the other day, and I got home, and, I told, I, and, and he called me, and uh, I, I, we was talking on the phone, and I said, I want you to do something, another something else for me. He said, I'll be glad to. I said, you will? He said, yeah. I said, October 1st, brother, we're, uh, October 2nd, brother Wayne, we're having friend day, and I want you to come be my friend. He said, I'm there. But you know what I'm going to do, brother Derek? I'm going to call him again this week, about Thursday or Friday. Because he was, that, he was, hey, brother, that, brother Derek, he was on board two weeks ago when I asked him, but he may not be on board. So I'm going to have to make sure he's on board. There's just a standard. A standard. Hey, something that's stable, something that's, sta- that's stable and out front that people can see. So you got to elevate. Hey, the church ought to be elevated above everything else on our schedule. Our schedule should revolve around the church instead of our church around our schedule. Well, preacher, I'll be there if my schedule will work it. 
I thought this was your church. You say, you must make the church important. Because it's here that you'll worship God together. People of the world should know that we are different. You know this, I read this this morning when I was trying to get this together. I, 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 you know that God marked His children of Israel, they had a mark on them? That when everybody else saw the children of Israel, brother Kevin, they said, they belong to God. They don't belong to the Gentiles. They're Jews. They belong to the Lord. They belong to God. They're God's people. And you know, even the enemies, even the enemies of Israel called them this. They called them, that's God's people. That's the people of God. Even the enemies did that. So the standard, and God told the children of Israel, He said, I'm going to set a standard before you. That the kings, that the kings and the queens will come down and and and, and, and talked about had licking the dust around your feet. That's a standard. And if we would set a standard in our lives, I set a standard at the church house, then I promise you, people would respect the church house more. Do you know why the people don't respect the church house? You know why they can come in and come as they please and leave as they come? It's because the church has not set a standard. Amen. Amen. Help us, Lord. This is what the Bible says. The Bible says work out your own salvation. Well, preacher, what in the world does that mean? That means God's working through you, God's working in you, and He's going to work out from you. It's not talking about getting working the way to salvation. He said, you already saved. He's saying that what's in you ought to come out of you. And you're going to have to work it out of you. Amen. Yeah, Amen. Yeah, I, know, I know this religious world, Brother Michael, says a standard doesn't matter. But they're wrong. God's always, has, God has always, always, always put a standard, put a stamp on His children. And our church ought to have a Bible standard, a biblical standard that are written not in our... This is what God told the children of Israel. This is what's a problem, a lot of, a lot of problems with people. They, get, they don't like it because the preacher says, well, there ought to be a standard. There ought to be some standards. There ought to be convictions. Well, there ought to be convictions. There ought to be standards around the church. House. And everybody that don't like it is because they don't like the standard. Am I still on back there, fellas? Brother Larry, the people that has always had a problem with the, the, the standards of the church are those that don't like the standards. But God's always had a standard. And God has always marked His children with a standard. He, he, he's always done that. And I think we still ought to understand. We ought to have a standard. But this is what He said, Brother Harvey. He said, I'm not giving you a standard. I'm not giving you the law that you'll learn them. He said, I'm giving you that. I'll write them on your heart. And if you got the standard, you got the law of God in your heart, you'll have no problem. You'll have no problem doing right. Amen. Brother Frank, it's when we're trying to figure this thing out with our minds instead of our heart. Amen. Number four. I, here, here again, like I said, Brother Tater, I'm, I, I ain't got a problem with that. I really don't. It don't bother me. It would, I would if he had his britches all tore up and his shirt sleeves off. Don't come in here sleeveless. Miss Lord, make sure that don't happen. <laughs> Amen. But how, I, I, listen, I'm just saying, n number four, I know some of y'all, I've lost some of y'all, but number four, why? Because this is my church. Brother David, this is my church, there's a standard there. Number, number four, they, they, it's the serious, serious, serious of it. We ought to get serious about it. I don't think, listen, Brother Harvey shouting in the choir, man, that blessed me. That blessed me. Brother Pearson over there raising his hand, that blesses me. Some of y'all that raise your hand, that blesses me. I'm not talking about getting up here and be, be starchy, but if we, brother, brother Jimmy, we ought to have some seriousness of the church house. We ought to be serious about this thing. Miss Tammy and I got married 34 plus years ago. I was serious about it. I didn't get married just to be getting out of mom and dad's house. I got married because I loved her, and I wanted her to be my wife. And so there ought to be some serious. We, listen, we, people don't take church serious no more. And if we don't take church house serious, I promise you nobody else will. Don't expect them to. 
Amen. Let's just go out and get them to be serious about it. Understand your church is needed in your life, not only in your life, but Brother Frank, they're needed in the life of this community. They're needed. This, this church, this local church, is needed not only in our community. It's local churches are needed in our country, in our county. We're needed. They may not act like we're needed, but we're needed. And I think we ought to be committed. We ought to be committed to, to the growth here, both spiritually... I think we ought to have a spiritual church. Yeah, man. I don't think we ought to come in here and just have everything programmed out. I don't think, hey, if it got out on the choir a little bit, I could sing three or four more. It wouldn't have bothered me. If, if Miss Valerie hit that, if Miss Valerie hit that special note, it wouldn't have bothered me to just, let's go do it some more. Some of y'all testify to run or, or get in the all that don't bother, that don't bother me. That does, as a matter of fact, I like that. I encourage that. Yeah, man. But I'm serious about it. Brother Doug, I'm serious about church. I'm committed to it. I'm committed to the growth spiritually. I'm committed to it growing uh, with more truth. Yeah, Amen. I want, I want God to grow us. Grow us together and grow us up and grow us out. Yeah, Amen. We're serious. Hey, are, are we serious about seeing God bless our church or we just want Him to bless our church? But are we serious about it? If we're serious about it, brother, we'll do something about it if we're serious. If we're serious. See, I just don't want to wish something might happen. I want God to bless our church and I'm serious about it. I want to, I want to do something about it. Amen. I can't do it by myself. You can't do it by yourself. We got to do it together. Right? Why? Why do we do it together? Because it's my church. It's your church. Brother Ron, we just can't do it. We just can't do it. Well, well it won't matter, preacher, if we have, don't come on Wednesday night. Well, it does matter. It does matter. If you're serious about it, it matters. I get work. I get sickness. I get all, I get all those things. I don't, I mean, I'm, not, I'm, not a, I'm not that hard. I think we ought to be serious. I thought, brother, I'm telling you, I think we ought to be recommitted. I think we ought to give ourselves over to, to God and the church afresh and anew. Amen. I think we ought to. Let's stand to our feet, heads bowed, eyes closed. I wonder how many would be with, with, would, would agree with me and, and be of the same agreement that let's, let's, my church, and I want to see some good things happen around here. Just slip up your hands. We want to see some great things happen with God around here.